here we are to start the installation. Uh, step one for the install is getting the H bracket mounted. That's this guy here. And that's going to be mounted in the lower position on the transom. Uh, this is a bit of a special installation because what we're going to do is we actually need to have a very thick shim, uh, which is these four starboard plastic shims, um, to push the unit further aft because the main rudder on this boat actually projects aft of the end of the transom. So we need to achieve enough rudder clearance so that there's separation between the forward edge of the hydrovane rudder and the trailing edge of the main rudder. Um, we've also got a backing plate here inside that's going to go on the inside of the transom. Um, and uh, we're going to start by drilling the inboard hole first. And then we're going to line the unit up vertically with this dummy shaft to get things lined up properly and then drill the outboard hole. We've got Ian here, uh, the owner of the Cora Jane, and he is the lucky one who gets to do the dirty work and drill the holes. So we're gonna get to it. So what we've done is we've set up a, uh, what we call a diaper, which is a tarp under the transom here. And the purpose of the diaper is simply just to catch anything that you do potentially drop, uh, whether it's tools or parts of the hydrovane. Uh, and now Ian's going to start by drilling the inboard hole uh, for the for the H bracket, and he's going to just do a pilot hole first uh, before drilling the actual uh, 10 millimeter hole. So we've just drilled the inboard hole. For the, uh, for the H bracket, uh, a 10 millimeter hole. And we've put a, the dummy shaft inside the H clamp uh, to allow us to find the uh, alignment of the shaft. We've also taped a spirit level to the shaft to kind of help us to do a comparison between a visual and what the level says. If there's any, any question, different discrepancy between the spirit level and the visual alignment, you should go off a of visual alignment because no boat sits level. You know, there's always going to be a slight discrepancy. The whole point is that the shaft is completely vertical with the, the center line of the boat. So you can use the backstay or the mast as your best reference point. Um, and uh, so we've lined it up. We've now marked for the outboard hole where it's going to sit. And now we're going to drill the outboard hole. So hopefully we've got it right. We've now just successfully installed the H bracket. Uh, we've got both bolts, the holes drilled, the bolts through bolted, the pad in place, and the shaft is aligned vertically. So uh, we've done well so far, and now we are going to move on to the A bracket. In this installation, we could have used an E bracket, the single strut bracket, but the A bracket is stronger as it spreads the loads laterally. Uh, the A bracket is wonderful. It's very easy to work with. It's hinged here on the arms, it's hinged on the flanges. The flanges rotate 360 degrees. And we've also added the feature about six months ago of being able to spread the arms from 40 degrees all the way to 80 degrees. Uh, so it gives you a lot of flexibility on positioning. Also, the arms do not need to be symmetrical. One arm can be up, one arm can be down, horizontal. You just need to find a good attachment point for them. So now we've actually decided to put the actual shaft in place uh, just to make sure that the PVC tube didn't have any bend or flex in it. So in order to align it vertically on a four and a half basis, what we can do is just use this as a plumb bob, hang it off the side like that, and then because it's hinged there, we just move the shaft back and forth as needed until we find that vertical plane. So right now we're just about in line so that the rudder is fore and aft. And the reason, the importance for doing this is because the rudder is a semi-balanced rudder. So if you have the unit leaning too far, the shaft leaning too far forward, it throws out the balance of the rudder. And if you have the shaft leaning too far aft, it throws out the balance of the rudder. So it is important that it's fairly vertical. So we're on to installing the second bracket here, uh, the A bracket. Uh, and we've done a few things in preparation. 
Uh, one thing we've done is we've got the dummy tubes in the, in the clamps here on both sides of the bracket. Um, and in order to get them in, we're using these openers, the stainless bolt openers. And what that does is it opens up the casting so that the tube can free, freely move inside. Um, so we've got the outer one aligned. Uh, we've actually through bolted it on, on both sides. And now we will move on to the inboard arm. Um, and we're positioning the inboard arm flange vertically um, so that we don't need to use a uh, timber powder shim on it. If we position it uh, horizontally like this, uh, there's enough of a flange, enough of a contour difference between the two that we would require uh, a shim. So we're going to go with a vertical uh, orientation. Uh, aesthetically, it also looks a bit nicer and uh, helps spread the loads. So Ian uh, here is going to get the flange uh, lined up so that it's flush on the transom, which it is now. And he's just going to put a mark using a jiffy uh, where the holes are for the um, through bolts to go through. Uh, and we'll start by drilling one, rechecking the, the bottom one, and then moving on to the second one. We're moving on nicely here. You'll see that uh, Will and Ian have successfully mounted this uh, inner flange of the A bracket. Um, they've mounted it in a way so that the um, bracket is sitting very naturally. Um, the step we have to do now, because we've been using these PVC uh, dummy struts, is to cut the stainless struts to length. Now, when you receive your hydrovane with the A bracket, you'll receive two of these stainless tubes that are 31 inches in length. Uh, luckily for us, in this situation, we're going to be cutting them down to such a short size that we're probably only going to need to use one of the struts in total. Ian has now successfully cut the stainless tubes to length and we've taken out the PVC ones and replaced them with the stainless tubes. We haven't yet tightened down everything completely on the A bracket because we're going to show you the bolt tightening sequence in a second. What we have done in terms of tightening bolts is tighten down all our 10 millimeter bolts that attach the flanges to the hull. Let's take a look at the H bracket again. So now it's been properly installed onto the transom. The 10 millimeter bolts have been tightened down and so this flange now is sitting on a perfectly flat surface. We have our uh, pads and if you look very closely you'll notice that the pad that's closest to the hull has been sanded out slightly so that it's picking up the uh, contour of the hull. We have some uh, sealant there, 5200, and then on the inside of the transom, uh, in order for the backing plate to attach to a perfectly flat surface as well, we had to make a bed of epoxy, and we'll show you that in a, in a moment here. But the H bracket is now mounted to the hull. Uh, the next step is tightening the bolts so that the shaft is properly clamped in place. Uh, this is a very important step for the installation, and that's the bolt tightening sequence for whichever brackets you're using the H, the E, or the A. And I'm going to show you bolt tightening sequence for each of those. Check out the instructions at this point. There are some diagrams there that will help you as well. Uh, for the H bracket to start, it's pretty simple. The first bolt you're going to tighten, bolt A, is the one that's on the hinge right here. The second bolt you're going to tighten is the one that clamps it down. And the purpose of this sequence is to make sure that both of the cheeks are being clamped evenly onto the shaft. Another thing to make sure of is to take a look at your shaft sleeves. So there's a little gap in the sleeve and you want to make sure that is lined up with the gap between the two cheeks of the shaft clamp. For the A bracket, there are a few more bolts to deal with. Uh, at this stage, of course, our 10 millimeter bolts are attaching the flanges onto the hull. Uh, in terms of the other ones, we're first going to deal with attaching the stainless tubes properly and evenly. So bolts A in this case are all of these eight bolts in total that clamp around the tube itself. You want to tighten those down first. After you've done that, you're good to go with bolts B, which are all the bolts that sit at the hinges of the A bracket. You can see here four of them. And you want to do those secondary because at that point, the stainless tube will be sitting in a natural position. So you, do the, you, you tighten those hinges when it's all sitting quite naturally. And then finally, it's bolt C, which we see here, which 
attaches the cheeks together that clamp around the shaft. One final thing to note, again, you'll look at the sleeve here, the A shaft sleeve, and you'll see that the little gap is lined up with the gap between the cheeks. So the one I want to point out that we didn't actually use the E bracket in this installation. Every installation only has two brackets. Uh, we decided to go with the double strut A bracket instead of the single strut E bracket, uh, just for strength reasons primarily. Um, the E bracket, the tube that we supply is 18 inches. That's about the maximum length we want to go. Uh, and then it's cut down as needed during the installation. Anything beyond 18 inches, it really is best to go with an A bracket depending on the installation. If you are installing the E bracket, it also has a very specific bolt tightening sequence that you want to follow shown in the manual. You want to start with the A bolts, uh, starting with the transom clamp first, moving, then moving on to the shaft end, uh, also A bolts. You want these to clamp down evenly, so torque them you know, one to the next until it's clamping evenly. And then the B bolt, which is the outer shaft clamp bolt, uh, is the final bolt. The whole purpose is to make sure that everything's getting tightened down evenly uh, so nothing is um, askew. One of the few guidelines that you do want to follow uh, when you're setting the unit up is the shaft location. And specifically, we want to look at the distance between the bottom bearing of the tube to the distance to the bottom of the H bracket. It's very important that you don't clamp the lower bracket, whether it's an H, an A, or an E, too close to the bottom bearing because it will actually pinch the bearing and cause friction. So we want to try and achieve at least two inches of clearance between the bottom bearing and the bottom of the H bracket. And then on the flip side of that, we don't want to go more than 10 inches of distance between the H bracket and the bottom bearing because you will put too much load on the tube. So you want to try and stay with that 2 and 10 inch limitation, which is outlined in the, um, in the manual. Another consideration when positioning the brackets is to make sure that you allow enough room for the drive unit to slide over top of the, uh, the shaft assembly. Uh, there'll be about six inches of drive unit that fits over top here. So you want to make sure you've got enough room between the upper bracket and the bottom of the drive unit.